Welcome to Yoga for a Better Back. I'm going to move you through a select series of postures to help optimize your alignment, maximize vertebral space. And that's probably the main point that as we move through the sequence, the idea is to create as much space in the spine as we possibly can. Some of the postures will also build strength in the lower back and increase mobility. So without any further explanation, let's go ahead and just start on our back. If anything we do troubles you or feels uncomfortable, I'd like you to modify it or skip it all together. So as you lie down flat onto your back, legs straight, please bring your legs together. If it's uncomfortable, you can bend your knees and have your feet on the floor, knees in the air. Okay, either feet hip distance apart or together. Let's begin just by connecting simple movement where you'll be lengthening your spine and inhale, raising your arms gradually. So breathe in, draw both arms up into the air towards ceiling and overhead. And as you exhale, lower the arms back to your side. Shape the breath to be about a five count inhale, five count exhale. Again, inhaling, arms reach back, feel the collarbones lift and you begin to create more length, spine toward the crown of the head, exhale, lowering both arms back to your side. Three more times, deep inhalation, lifting the collarbones, upper spine lengthens, deep exhalation. Think about drawing the lower belly toward the spine and slightly up to build more support for the low back. Two more times. Reaching, creating more space, creating more space in the lower back in particular, and exhaling, and just finish the last one. In that position, then go ahead and bend your right knee so your arms are back by your side. And as you bring the right knee, thigh, into the chest, we're going to work with a little bit of dynamic movement. So, um, a little bit of action and counteraction. So your left leg is straight, and I'm gonna have you flex the left foot so it points toward the ceiling. Inhale, press the right thigh away from your chest. Notice the hip flexor engage to do that. Now as you exhale and bend the elbows to draw, draw the thigh deeper into the chest, resist with the hip flexor. Inhale, press the thigh away from the chest. So engaging the hip flexor. And now exhale, continue to engage it and pull in opposition to that with the arms. And repeating that two more times. Inhale, pressing the thigh away, strongly engage. The psoas or hip flexor drawing the thigh back into the chest. And one more time, please. So you're not lax at all, but actually building resistance. Now we'll hold the thigh into the chest. And now you can let go of the resistance, softening the groin, the abdomen, and of course the lower back. And now as you're breathing though, sense that you're trying to create a slight dip in the low back and lift the collarbones. It's not even a bad idea to flex the right foot as well. Softening the whole body, releasing any lower back tension. Please change legs. Straighten the right leg. The right foot points to the ceiling. Press the left thigh away, inhaling. As you exhale, bend the elbows. There's still some resistance to the action of the arms, which are drawing the leg into you. So with the breath, pressing the thigh away, uh, excuse me, with the exhalation, drawing it in, but still resisting one more time. So what we want to do is build strength at the core. Now we'll draw the leg in. You can release all resistance. But there is just this emphasis of creating a little bit of arch in your lower back. It's as though you're trying to get the left sit bone back to the floor. Soften the face, relax your shoulders and your neck.
So when we when our back is compromised, a lot of compensatory engagement will take place, which often begins to uh, exacerbate the issues with low back. Now from here, we'll pull both these in. So what I was going to say is it's important that we create mobility and ultimately relax all the compensation and tightness that happens around it. Okay, so I want to point out we're doing a simple twist. Bring your arms out to the side. Sure. Arms line up with the shoulders. Now, rather than drawing the thighs to the chest and then dropping the knees over, I don't want you to break the 90 degree angle with the thighs. In fact, it should be less than 90. And you drop the knees just over to the side, super simple. And this may actually create a slight dip in the low back again. Inhale, pull the legs to center. Exhale, take them the opposite way. And now you can add a little bit of head movement to this if you like. So as the knees go to the right, the chin turns to the left. And remember, you're not breaking 90 degrees. Your thighs are not moving toward the underarm. The angle between your upper body and your thighs is greater than 90 degrees. So that's two to each side. Keep going. We'll go four times, inhaling, using the breath. As you breathe out, contracting the navel, dropping the knees over, moving into the twist, coming back up. And you're repeating that. To each side. One more time. Excellent. Now go back to side one, the first side, and just stay there three or four slow, deep breaths. Again, notice any compensatory stress, tension that you're holding on to. So this is in addition to the reactivity around lower back, being compromised or discomfort there. Notice your body gripping. We're also holding tension throughout our lives. Uh, unless we're conscious about releasing it, maybe in the face, or the shoulders, or the neck, please release as you breathe out. And more and more, just letting the ground support you, you become effortless. Good, and then please change sides. Take the knees over, again, mindful of the angle. You're not at less than 90 degrees between your thighs and your upper body. And relax there. Soften the opposite shoulder to the floor. Keep the collarbones wide and more and more you can depend on the ground supporting you. Relax into the low back using the breath and again as you're exhaling the navel softly contracts. Right. So slowly, let's come back to center and thighs towards your chest again, arms by your side. And now we'll straighten the legs vertically, take the arms overhead. Again, at the end here, the arms are overhead on the floor as close to that as you can get with a slight dip in the low back, straightening your knees four times. And as you straighten your legs, you find any stress in the low back, you can keep the knees slightly flexed and hold that edge right between where you kind of have reached your furthest point where you can continue to remain comfortable in your low back. What I'd like you to emphasize now is as you straighten your legs, arms overhead, breathe deeply here. And with each inhale, draw the collarbones higher, create more space in the lower spine. So this is the constant theme throughout the class and really should be a focus throughout life, especially if the lower back is compromised, we want to create as much space as we can consistently, not just when we're doing practice, but how we sit, even how we walk, how we engage with life. Continue to keep length in the low spine, exhale, release. Adjust for a moment, feet on the floor, arms by your side. 
you might already sense a little more openness in the low back. Please roll over to your side, come up to fours on the floor. And we're going to move through this simple sequence initially into a super gentle forward bend. So the chin lifts. It's a slight dip in the lower back again, but the abdomen is firm, supporting you. As you exhale, go back. Seat to the heels, chest to the thighs. Soften the neck, let the head drop through the arms. Repeat that. Inhale, chest fills, collarbones lift. And as I exhale, I'm again reinforcing this idea that on the exhalation, I can build support for my lower back and also create more intelligence around gentle forward folding. Good. Two more, please. And the slower you move, the more deliberately you can bring the navel to the back body and sense that you're really creating a powerful sense of support for the sacrum. Take your time. Remember, you actually want to bend the elbows a little bit to the floor. Maybe a new idea for you to do this, but in fact, to help you sense it, let's do one more. And notice that as I, as you bend your elbows toward the floor, there's a little opportunity for traction that there wasn't otherwise. So think about dropping the head, bending the elbows, forms toward the floor, and as you're doing it, as the elbows get to the floor first, you get this little extra traction or stretch in the low back. From here, inhale up to fours, move into downward facing dog. We curl the toes into the floor, you straighten the legs, pressing the hips high. Come down, back to fours, and you're going to repeat that. But this time, you're going to stay for a full breath. So inhale deeply. And as you exhale, same thing, contract the navel. And even sense the pelvic floor lift, building stability down around the core muscles that support the low back. Inhale down to fours. And repeat it, going back to the pose again. This time, a two breath stay. Softens exhale, firms, excuse me, softens inhale, firms exhale, and possibly sensing now that you're creating even more of attraction, more space for the low back. Next inhale, come back down to fours. You can do it one more time. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now stay for four breaths. straighten your elbows. Not so important if, whether or not the knees are straight. Much more valuable to think about creating more space in the low back. So you take a little bit of the emphasis out of the hamstrings and you can create more space. Your intention is to create space between the bones and even think about the discs expanding, taking the tops of the inner thighs as far back as possible. Next inhale, come back down to four, sit tall. If it's comfortable, sit on your heels if you can manage it. And adjust for a moment. Just there. Now as I inhale again, collarbones are lifting, abdomen's coming back, creating support for my lower spine. Great. From here, come back up to fours. So I'll have you step your right foot forward. And in that position, I'm going to rest my right hand on my thigh. So again, I'm going to create more space in my low back and also create a little more opening here for the psoas, which is responsible for, let's put it this way, if it's healthy and stretched and strong, responsible for the lower back being healthy. So let's inhale, take the arm up, high in the air, lift off the lower spine, and exhale, come out of the pose. Inhaling. Lift the heart. 
one more time. Let's go into it. And now please stay. Do your best here to keep the abdomen firm. Let's drawing in against the spine. Collarbones lift. And if you're aware of some dullness, achiness around the, the tops of the th top of the thigh or groin, that's great. But even more significant is drawing the belly in and up. I don't even mind you lowering the hand, lifting the, the abdominal wall, and just drawing the flesh up to get into the deep stretch for the psoas, which is more or less going to be to the left of the navel, maybe two, three inches, and you draw up. While I'm doing this, though, I'm still creating as much length the spine toward the top of my head. Now let's come out of the pose, change legs. You begin to sense where our focus is and the muscles that are key to ensuring that your lower back well, is as spacious as possible, that your posture is optimized, and that you're putting as little pressure or that you're compromising your avoiding compromising the health of the lower back. In these simple movements, these ideas are reinforced. Okay, so let's go one more time, and then we'll stay. Arm in the air, lift off the abdomen. If you like, you can lower the hand, lift the flesh. Literally drawing the abdomen in and up. Now, eventually you can do that without having to use your hand. Inhale. In this case, I'm stretching up even a little higher. So if I'm stretching, my right arm is in the air now. I'm even going to extend the right side of my spine a little bit longer. And you breathe comfortably there. And then relax. Pause for a moment. And just establish a posture that you know is as pain-free as possible. And that's always going to be when you have more space. Less compression, more comfort. Let's stand up. So the next two movements are, um, again, I, I'm working with them specifically to create more lower back space. Ideally now you can find a wall pretty close by. And... Uh, I've got this funny little wall I'm going to work with here, and uh, I don't really have much of a choice. Uh, the only reason I say it's funny is because it's just a slightly lower than ideal. So what I'm going to do is put my hands, first of all, establish myself being arm's length from the wall, fingers extended. Next, I put the heels of the palms on the wall above the crown of my head. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. Now I press my inner thighs back. Remember what we did in Downward Dog? It's the same action. And now you begin to breathe here. Keep your fingertips, your palms against the wall. It is a chest opener. But again, I want you to emphasize the traction-like feeling in your lower back. With each exhale, I firm my belly. With each inhale, my chest naturally expands. So it's a gentle opening for the chest and thoracic spine. But if I get deliberate, I can create more space in my lumbar spine, lower back. And it's really traditionally, I'm going to have you stay about another, another 15, 20 seconds. Almost, I would say, 80% of the lower back issues have to do with that, the weakness in the lumbar spine and where the lumbar and the sacrum merge. So really around that band there in the lower back. That's where most of it, most lower back issues stem from. Not all, but a great deal of them. Okay, come up slowly and pause for a moment and just notice how that's feeling. More space in the lower back. What do we say? More space, more comfort. Now we're gonna actually turn it into a forward bend, again using the wall. So. The mistake often I see people make is that their feet are not far enough forward. So basically, what I say is, if I take one step, it's usually enough to get it right. So 
the distance from the wall is more or less a foot away. So I put one foot against the wall, step the other foot forward, widen the feet hip distance apart, and that's generally speaking the right distance. Now what I want to do is just put the hands on the wall, uh, more or less by the sides of my hips. I go forward flat back. And here, my back is as parallel to the floor as it can be. The neck is long. Now, in a sense, what you're doing is pushing off the wall, but your sit bones never completely come off the wall. It's more of an isometric action. Breathe deeply here. And again, a good half minute. Some of you are super flexible, may not be noticing in much stretch behind your hamstrings, but you're still getting benefit because you're teaching the spine, reminding the spine and supporting muscles about how to engage properly for optimum posture. And those of you feeling a stretch behind your legs and your hamstrings, that's great. Please continue to breathe, slightly dipping the low back, creating as much length through the spine as possible. Couple more breaths. If you feel like you can press your lower back further to the legs without compromising the length in your upper spine, that's also fine. So now I'm just slowly taking the same posture, but changing the angle, dipping closer to my thighs. Okay, let's inhale, flat back, and come all the way back up again. Pause. So I'm already beginning to sense now my lower back, more vibrancy there, more spaciousness there. It's also, you may also notice that as you experience more freedom in your low back, you feel lighter in the mind. Okay, so this next sequence is we're gonna link together a couple poses. One of my favorites is chair pose because it builds so much in the low back. We're going to do it in a particular way though. So inhale, please raise your arms. Exhale, sink your hips. Notice here, I'm in a slight arch in my low back. Next exhale, I go forward. Upper body rests on my thighs. And I reach as far forward, my fingertips away from my toes, tractioning my lower back. Inhale, and come back into the arch position. Exhale, I pause, firming my belly, and inhale again, I straighten my knees. So let's repeat that. Exhale, sink. Inhale, stay. Exhale, fold forward. Keep the hips low. You'll notice my sit bones are just about, just slightly than the height of my knees. Again, I inhale and lean back. That's an arch. And then I press back. Next inhale, straight knees. Two more times. And straight legs, lower both arms, lift the heart, collarbones again, lift. Great, please lie down onto your back again on the floor. Now, I'm keeping this particular practice very straightforward and rather simple. Ideally, we're not complicating it with a lot of different poses, so you can get a sense of whether or not this practice helps. If there's any postures that you feel might be compromising the health of the lower back, then skip them the next time you do the practice. By not complicating the practice with a lot of extra stuff, what we want to do is create a baseline where you feel super comfortable, where the back is positively impacted. Okay, so as you lie down, you notice for the most part, I'm not emphasizing a lot of twisting or forward bends. Generally speaking, most back issues are triggered by forward bending. And that's because perhaps postural issues, if not, if we didn't have an acute accident or something like that, but a lifetime of sitting 
Compromised posture creates more pressure in the low back. So gently bridge pose. Arms by your side, knees bent, feet hip distance apart. Inhale and come up. So there's bridge, arms are overhead, head in the center, please. Exhale, lower the arms by your side. Three more. And if you do a couple more, and afterwards, I'd like you just to take a moment and check in with how the back is feeling. Let's do one more time. Okay, so just pause there for a moment. Make sure your spine has plenty of space in it. Let your breath adjust. Mind comes down or settles around the lower back, alert to sensation. Good. Now let's progress. One more back bend. Uh, have you roll over onto your stomach. So that you can see me, obviously want to be on flat, uh, legs extended. Now, we're going to be moving in and out of a super gentle cobra pose. Notice where my arms are. My forearms are on the floor, elbows more or less under my shoulders, maybe slightly back, a little further back, something like this. So that as you come up, there's no pressure in your lower back at all. We're not looking for a big back bend. We're actually looking just to re reinvigorate or emphasize the gentle lumbar curve, gentle. Now, as I come down, it's as if I'm dragging my arms, almost pulling them, pawing the earth to create more length in my spine. Does that make sense? Inhale and come up. There's still this almost dragging feeling to the arms. The heart lifts and exhale, I come down. And when I come down, Emphasize more extension or lengthening in the lower, uh, lower spine, lower discs. Repeat it. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, creating traction. Inhaling, coming up. So you get what I'm suggesting now is on the way down, you're emphasizing, pawing the earth, clawing it, and using that as leverage to lengthen the spine more. Let's go up one more time. And now let's stay if it's comfortable for a few breaths here. As I press down through my inner forearms, again, I'm not looking to get higher. My elbows stay on the floor. I'm not looking to get any higher than this, but just incrementally creating more length. My belly is stretching. Heart is lifting. Take four, five breaths here. Pressing down through the arms. Can create an incremental, just a little more spaciousness. And now I come down and I'm going to continue to stay there. My head is going to stay off the floor, chest off the floor, and I'm still pawing the earth, pawing the mat and inviting the spine to stretch toward the top of the head. Each exhale, the belly firms, creating strong work at the core and more spaciousness in the lower spine. Okay, good. Relax, come down, put both hands on your sacrum. Now let's try the same movement just not using the arms, only lower back engagement. So inhale and come up. So my hands are on my sacrum, palms face up. When I exhale down, I turn the head to the side. Repeat it.
So I've designed the practice so, especially if you do have any lower back issues, that we're gonna slowly build strength, mobility, and postural integrity. And then in subsequent sequences, we can begin to develop more mobility. Okay, all the way back up, last one. And exhale, come down. Okay, press back to downward dog again. And then take advantage of the pose because it does provide this opportunity to create traction in a different direction, more space, re-emphasize it. And we're gonna take one of the simplest of all the forward bends. And this can be magical really for someone who's had custom to lots of lower back tension, which is just to lie forward on the thighs. And here's what I'd like you to do while you rest here. More and more, let the weight of the upper body fall onto the thighs. As you exhale, contract the navel. Allow the back to widen away from the spine, the space between the shoulder blades to increase. And as you contract the navel, sense or have the intention of lengthening the spine toward the top of the head. Just stay, please, about another half minute or so, just taking advantage of the gravity to help the back open, release any tension, stress. And slowly please sit up again we're going to finish up on our back last posture go ahead and please sit up again and stretch out on your back on the floor initially both knees bent so next at next pose we're going to again release the hamstrings if you're not as flexible in that area then we recommend you use a strap something to increase uh, the likelihood of you uh, straightening your leg while keeping the spine long. So those of you more flexible, you don't have to use a strap, of course. So let's try here. Keep the left thigh, foot on the, on the floor. Draw the right thigh toward your chest. Grab the big toe and straighten the leg projecting into your heel. So notice what's going on here for me is I'm working my knee straight. Remember earlier at the very beginning of the practice, I had you engage the hip flexor so the thigh was pressing away from your chest. Integrate, integrate that into this action. Now, if you do have your right knee straight, you can straighten your left leg on the floor. So this is true whether or not you have your hands on a, using a strap around the ball of your foot or you simply have the fingers to the big toe. But if the knee is not straight, then we'll strongly recommend that you keep the left foot on the floor and work again to create a slight dip in the low back and gradually work the knee straight. Even in this position, if I'm mindful, I can create more traction, I can create more space. This builds that openness, takes the pressure off the disc in the low back. Now in that position, lift the head, shoulder blades off the floor. See if you can pull the leg to you again. Some of you might be using a strap here, which is fine. And if you're using the strap, just take it in one hand. The left hand can remain on the left thigh. What's nice about this is it keeps the lower back from uh, uh, the lumbar spine from becoming too reversed here. I've got the floor flattening my lower back. And then slowly I'm going to release the head and shoulder blades back to the floor, release the foot down. And I'm going to rest with both knees straight or bent. Either one's fine. And have the intention to completely relax the right side of the body. 
even just from the right heel, even to the right side, the base of the skull. Good, let's do the other side. So again, use the strap if necessary, if that's helpful, to get the knee more straight. And remember, I'm again, gonna, even when my foot is on, the right foot's on the floor, I'm gonna engage the hip flexor, press the femur away. I'm gonna focus on dipping the lower back. If I do have my left leg straight, I'm gonna straighten my right. You can hold the strap with one hand, perhaps, and keep the right palm on the thigh. As I breathe, thinking about dipping the lower back, lengthening the spine toward the top of the head. So now when we want to do corrective measures for the spine, there's really never a point where we become completely passive. There's always a certain level of engagement could well be that we have to do that in order to break patterns, in order to create new uh, educational or new uh, pattern, uh, new memories in the body and in the musculature. So let's maybe now lift the shoulder blades off the floor, draw the leg toward us. Again, possibly holding with the strap, just the one hand. And then release when you're ready. Shoulder blades and head. But we're gonna go straight into a relaxation. If you have some sensitivity in your lower back, you may wanna put something under your thighs. You might have a bolster. I'm just gonna do something as simple as my meditation cushion. And under the thighs is all we need here. So when you're ready, settle, make any final adjustments you need for this, uh, for this final relaxation. So please close your eyes, let your body open to the earth. Take four slow, deep breaths. Now allow your breath to slowly readjust and to begin to flow effortlessly. Relax and sense both heels softening into the earth. So your heels are just drawn by gravity, being pulled into the earth. Just relax, there's nothing to do. Just rest. Now please relax and sense both calves being drawn into the earth. Both thighs relax into the earth. Soften and relax your hips. Your abdomen softens. The chest or breast, feel them soften. Even take a moment just to notice your heartbeat. Both arms relax. Face, jaw, 
tongue, eyes. Even your eyes sink into your eye sockets. Return to the breath. Again, watch the body breathing. Notice how the breath has changed. Your breath flows smoothly and effortlessly. With each exhale, you relax all tension. You let go of stress. No effort. In fact, with each exhale, you're letting go of effort, letting go of trying. Eventually, you reach a state of effortlessness. Where being and becoming are one. The mind is at rest, the body healing. Continue to soak in this healing rhythm for as long as you like. Whenever you're ready, you bring yourself out of the practice. Ideally, to repeat this practice frequently, to enjoy the freedom and well-being of a healthy back. Enjoy it.